Right now, we'll be entering our um, honors and recognition phase. Um, right now, we'll be announcing the winners for the competition that is outside. This is Daniel Elmore. He's a senior member of um, Society of Multicultural Architects and Designers. And this is Cameron Etheridge, who is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, the Delta Zeta chapter. going to begin uh, with the explanation of the competition. All right, uh, for the competition, entrants were asked to design an exhibition of some sort whose requirements are purely that it fits within the site constraints and conforms to real life standards of being easily constructible and able to stand for at least one month. The exhibition may display information of any medium of your choosing, be it electronic, artifacts, or etc. As long as this information is pertaining to the African or African American culture in celebration of Black History Month. Entrants are inspired to be as creative as possible, as these creations will not actually be constructed. Entrants were asked to specifically address the theme of Diversity Week, which focuses on, among other subjects, questioning of the role of culture within both design theory and the field of design. This year's entries included, um, all I have here are the names of the, in, of the entries and not the names of the, the people who did the entries. Um, so we have Echoing Folk Tales, uh, Tunnel of Time, Voice Recognition, Mutual Program Unity, uh, Module Program Unity, J Flat, and Rhetorical Rhythm. And at this time, we can announce the, the winners. Um, so the third place winner is Module Program Unity. Um, this program, I mean, this project is conceived of four symmetrical modules where information is presented on monumental pedestals that when rolled along the tra a track towards the center of the exhibition uh, information about significant historical events in our African American history is uh, revealed through multimedia displayed on the screen. So congratulations to the entrance of Module Program Unity. All right, the second place winner is Echoing Folk Tales. This proposal is inspired by the African American folk tale, understood as a consistent but ever but evolving structure of, of culture. The concept of the folktale as an adaptable but consistent but consistent form provoked our application of the paper tube as a standard module, uh, laid flat and shifted to correspond with pre-existing circulation patterns on campus. Programmatically, the installation is intended to support contemporary stories storytelling and poetry for multiple users. The stage extended landscape and niches allow for communication at multiple scales. Formal communication 
Yeah, formal communication would take place via the small stage that intends to activate the Orange Grove as a public space for a gathering. So congratulations to group number two, Echoing Folk Tales. And last but not least, um, the first place winner of the competition is Voice Recognition. Um, African American culture finds itself at, one, at once overlooked and simultaneously a central voice in American society. Voice recognition manifests this paradox through a tripartite layered condition consisting uh, of uh, one, a mutated wall facing the quad, suggesting the uh, disregard faced by African Americans uh, while also, being con while also confronting student circulation patterns and compelling them to materially engage with the exhibit. Um, two, a reflective corridor between walls where the primary graphic component of the exhibition operates, and three, a step platform located on the southern light, located in southern light, creating a flexible gathering space of multi multiple scales, where the African American voice uh, vitalizes the exhibit in the form of speech, performance, and informal expression. Circumstantially, communication would also be produced, uh, provoked as students pass by. Uh, the structure. Ideally, imagine passed by the structure. Um, so, congratulations to the first place winner. Are there any in, are any of the winners in the in the auditorium right now? Okay. Being part of the uh, judging uh, group, council, <laughs> uh, some of the statements that were made about uh, the third place um, winner, Module Program Unity, is that uh, it was a well-written statement, it was a well-rendered project, um, but many of the uh, a uh, panelist felt as if it was a slightly undercooked architectural idea, meaning that it, it uh, could have had a little bit more specificity in, in how it uh, was developed um, and also uh, how it starts to uh, fit into the scale of the entire quad of the campus, um, thus doesn't fit well inside its site. So those were some of the things that uh, it didn't work, but again, well written and extremely well rendered uh, project. And the number two uh, entry, Echoing Folk Tales, uh, some statements that were made were that the uh, project was uh, a provocative use of material and occupation um, of the artifact <coughs> itself, uh, that it, it created a, an interesting um, sculpture within the site of the quad. Um, a bold and strong uh, artistic piece in that sense. Um, some of the things that uh, it, it could have been a little bit stronger in is in its uh, site strategy. How does it relate itself to the context of the uh, site? And also um, the information that is on the board itself. 
how does it become more clear how one uses this uh, artifact? Um, some of the image, you know, different images to convey its use. Um, but again, provocative and strong. Okay, and voice recognition, the number one uh, piece, uh, was felt that um, it addresses the core requirements uh, of, of the concept of the uh, competition brief. Um, its theme is well stated, extremely clear. It's presented well, um, well cited, and as far as uh, creating an environment of social interaction and use, um, people almost have to move through this uh, space to get from point A to point B um, and or see it as they move across the uh, quad itself and, um, and engage its narrative, uh, its program in that sense. Um, and then the final statement is that um, it's elegant in its, in its simplicity. So that's, uh, those are our winners. <laughs> Um, on behalf of SMAD, I'd like to thank the, uh, the judges of the competition, uh, Professor Pelkin, Professor Coleman, Professor Ruff, and Professor Robinson, um, and also the, everybody who uh, participated in the competition. Thank you very much. Thank oh, yeah. Uh, the first place prize is a $70 gift certificate to the bookstore. Okay. Is there anyone here from the first place group? Could you please come down to receive your prize? All right, everybody, I'm back. <laughs> I know you missed me. Um, for this part of our, our presentation, we've uh, dedicated a new award this year that's going to come from SMAD. Uh, we're trying to make it an annual thing. And for the assistance in, I guess, helping give out this award, I'd like to present SMAD's founder, Oswaldo Ortega. Okay, what we've decided, uh, recently a graduate of the School of Architecture, Brian C. West, who was uh, really instrumental in helping SMAD in its early years, uh, has passed away last year. So we've named this award after him, and so I guess I'll, I'll just explain. The Brian C. West Impact Award was initiated by SMAD to honor the member of the Syracuse community that we feel went above and beyond to assist our organization in meeting the goals and ideals stated in our mission statement. These individuals are being recognized for their dedication to supporting the cause of the underrepresented within the School of Architecture and for being an inspiration to our membership. These are the same qualities that we saw in Brian West and the relationships we wish to cultivate with those around us, both within and outside the discipline. Brian Cordell West attended the School of Architecture as an undergraduate and was known as a very active student. His accomplishments were many, both within the school and around the greater university. Brian was an active member of the National Organization of Minority Architecture Students, a national professional organization. Talking to his peers from this time at a recent national conference, I was told of a person with youthful energy and the tenacity to get things done. He was recognized for being one of the most active students in the organization and a constant participant in, at the annual convention. He was appointed to the National Executive Board to the position of student representative for the Eastern Region. Mr. West also founded the Organization of Minority Architects, OMAD, an organization that preceded SMAD here in this very school. This created one of the first peer groups within the School of Architecture and set the foundations for the work our organization is currently doing in the school. Outside of Slocum Hall, Brian was an active force on campus, taking part in student government and in other on-campus political spheres. The Student Government Association, now Student Association, honored him for his service to the university during his two terms as vice president. Brian graduated from Syracuse University with two bachelor's degrees in architecture and sociology and went on to graduate school at the University of Pennsylvania. Professionally, he worked for a variety of firms, including Gensler and Davis Brody and Bond, which, as we all have discussed this evening, was the firm of J. Max Bond, who we've been talking about. 
Um, befo before he started working at the Port Authority in New York City, at the time of his death, Brian was the senior property manager for the Freedom Tower, commemorating the World Trade Centers and the 9-11 attacks. Brian's life sets a perfect example of the type of professionals SMAD wishes to see in the future graduates from within our body. His dedication to improving the awareness and conditions for his minority peers, focus on academics including higher education, and versatility in the field reflect an individual that combined his interests and utilized them for the greater good of others. As one of the first alumni who became involved with SMAD, we applaud his desire to give back and connect with students to help further our goals and give a much appreciated insight from someone who has come before. He was always ready and willing to contribute, advise, help, and support in all of our endeavors. It is these qual qualities that we encountered when choosing this year's recipient. The recipient is a person very near and dear to many students' hearts. As the assistant director in the Office of Multicultural Affairs, Paul Buckley was known to be the one person that students could always drop in on for much needed counseling. Mr. Buckley could be intimidating, but consistently did whatever he could to help students to the best of his ability in a multitude of situations that went well beyond his job description. As the director of the Wellesling program, Paul focused his energies to creating a support network for first year students and to promote better academics. WellsLink served as a major retention initiative by providing workshops and tutoring to keep students on track early on. His capacity with SMAD was no different. Paul Buckley worked for many years to help solidify a voice for the multicultural population of Syracuse architecture, stepping in on many occasions as an advocate between the students and the administration. He supported SMAD general membership and worked to find ways to include more students in WellsLink and assist other programs in updating their breadth to accommodate the different needs of architecture students. Although he has recently left Syracuse University for a new position at Andrews University, he has remained a strong contact for our, our organization and is still using his Syracuse connections to assist us in our many initiatives. I present to Mr. Paul Buckley the 2000 Brian C. West Impact Award. Now, Paul is unable to attend today, but we do have Taysen Kim, who is the director in the Office of Multicultural Affairs, here to accept the award on Brian's behalf. Uh, this award was designed by Oz and built by the SMAD body. Um, I guess you can explain. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, my boss, the director of Multicultural Affairs, will be very happy to know you promoted me oh. to director. I'm actually the associate <laughs> director. <laughs> Um, I really want to thank you all, um, everyone in SMAD, Scott, for recognizing my, my colleague and very, very good friend, Paul Buckley. Um, and I actually, when I emailed him the, the, the email you had sent me, um, <coughs> he, he drafted a small little response, which I would like to read for all of you in, in a second. Um, but before I, I, I move on to that, um, I'm actually very new here. I've only been, to I've only been here about three years. And um, when I was brought on to the Wellslink team um, at Multicultural Affairs, I remember Paul telling me very specifically, we have to watch out for our architecture students. It's hard enough there, right? No matter what your background. And all they need is encouragement, support, and a home so that they can get a message that they don't hear too often when they're over there. And I remember him just drilling that into my head and we have to highlight these students and even though they never come to our programs because they're always in studio, <laughs> um, just make sure that they're okay and they know that we're, we're here for them. So I want you to know that from the very beginning he made it very clear that this is a very important cause to him. So um, I'll just read the email. Tess, wow, I am so moved. I have loved SMAD since its inception and I am ever so grateful for this demonstration of appreciation. Please let the students know that I admire their strength and tenacity. They have demonstrated with incredible fortitude as students and more importantly as human beings. They are exemplary in their discipline and character. These students make me believe in a higher design. They have been tested and tried there but remain faithful to their ambitions. I look forward to celebrating with the graduating seniors at commencement. Deeply moved, PMB. 
Paul and Buckley. Thank you again, and we are all honored. I'd now like to call to the stage the SMAD president for 2008 to 2009, Danielle Segovia Burke. Hi. Um, if you ask any tenured School of Architecture faculty member about Professor Emeritus Kermit J. Lee, they will tell you he was one of the nicest and most intelligent men that you will ever meet. They will also say Kermit was the first person to ever reach out to them when they first arrived at Syracuse. Professor Emeritus Kermit J. Lee graduated ma magna cum laude from Syracuse University. He was also the sec second black graduate of the School of Architecture. Professor Emeritus Lee is a Fulbright Scholar and a Fellow of the American Institute of Architects. Profe Professor Emeritus Lee was a founder and partner of the Scholar and Lee Firm and a member of the New York Coalition of Black Architects, which is the New York City chapter of NOMA. Professor Lee is remembered as being an excellent professor who puts in a lot of time with his students and takes a personal interest in their design development. He has a great sense of humor and knows how to criticize gently yet effectively. We have, um, we asked Professor Corman and um, the NOMA president, Stephen Lewis, for a couple of statements um, toward, for Kermit Lee. Professor Corman says that the Kermit Lee folder in my mental archive is thick and varied. My earliest recollection, recollections date from the fall of 1977 when I began teaching at Syracuse. Kermit was one of the first to welcome me on board and offer me counsel as a young and inexperienced faculty member. This was just a year after Werner became dean at the time when the school was at the beginning of a period of profound change. I remember that Kermit was instrumental in bringing man on board in a very set, really real sense of the reputation the school enjoys today is a direct result of Kermit's efforts during the Dean's search for 1975 to 1976. Um, maybe I'll just read one of the memories of Kermit Lee. Um, he says that the first was of Kermit Lee's voice. When I think of Kermit, I also hear his voice, a rich, bass, profound voice that commands attention through his intrinsic authority like that of James Earl Jones. You always knew when he was nearby because of that distinctive voice. When he was lecturing to his technology class in the old 108 auditorium, that voice would boom out and reverberate throughout Slocum. You could be on the fourth floor and still hear that voice. And then he says that Kermit was, there was Kermit the Oracle. More than any other faculty member, he um, <laughs> engineered a degree of encouragement and confidence in his students, and that was rare. Their affection towards him was always visible. There wasn't a day that you would not see affection, you would not see Kermit in his office or standing in the hall in animated conversation with the group of students. Um, the other strong memory relates to the institutional loyalty that he instilled within his students. I know this from numerous encounters with alums who always ask after Kermit and relate to me their fond memories of him. He understood well that all students eventually become alums and that the school's relationship with them does not stop at graduation. I am convinced that much of the generous support that we enjoy from those alums who encountered Kermit as students is due to a large part to the good memories they retain of him. He is a teacher, colleague, and professional of the best kind. Um, Stephen Lewis says, it is plausible that we exist concurrently in parallel universes. They overlap in random places, but each with its own identity and characteristics. Kermit operated on a wavelength and in a un universe that was transcendent, a great mentor of anyone who cared to pay attention to his brilliance, and then stand in a long line awaiting, oh, awaiting the chance to secure a position under his proverbial wing. Kermit was always there. The fact that my dad, Roger C. Lewis, was an architect and contemporary of Kermit, possibly afforded me affordable, sorry, a, a favorable consideration, but I make no apologies. As one of the pr precious few black students enrolled in the School of Architecture, I saw the need to connect with Kermit. 
His perspective as a great architect who happened to be black yields sobering results and hence the shared perspective among black architects of our generation that ethnic background played a role in the opportunity and recognition within the mainstream. He insisted on excellence and in return would give freely of his wisdom and counsel. My friend of today who shared Kermit's experience referred to situations where he opened our eyes in so many ways so often and with such affection. Kermit J. Lee, friend, hero, mentor, and inspiration, we love you. Stephen Lewis is a graduate of the um, School of Architecture. He's also the national president of the National, of the national Organization of Minority Architects. Professor Emeritus Lee, as the first American, first African American graduate of the second African American graduate of the School of Architecture and the first tenured minority faculty, the impact you have made on this history of the school is immeasurable. You have paved the way and set a standard of excellence for those minority students that follow and maintain a service and connection to Syracuse University that be benefits the next generation. It is this dedication that SMAD is trying to uphold as a value in its membership. You work in the Syracuse community as an architect reflect, reflects a devotion to the field and commitment to the profession. Students remember you as a patient and caring teacher that always went above and beyond. The faculty remembers you for the pr practical approach to those pra approach to the practice and your real world know-how about the design of buildings. For all these reasons, we feel as our school in renewing this image, we must honor you and the work you have done with both the school, its students, and in the fields. Please stand as we honor Professor Emeritus J. Lee, Jr. For his I now request that the SMAD eboard, if you guys are in the room, can the SMAD eboard come to the stage? The SMAD executive board, can you come to the stage? We're taking a picture. <laughs> also, Professor Corman. <laughs> Um, right now, we'll be moving into our second panel discussion. <laughs> 